Welcome back to the McLaren Thought Leadership Centre and CNN Inspirations. I'm Max Foster. This hour, we are taking a journey around the world and into the sea to find exciting new species. Now, if we tackle a new frontier of discovery, what should it be? Well, we're trying time because newly discovered species aren't just limited to animals living amongst us today. They're also being found in fossils and bones, reaching out to us from millions of years ago. Take a look. Earth has harbored life for roughly four billion years. More than 99% of all species that have ever lived on our planet are now extinct. But buried in rock and preserved through the ages, fossilized clues are helping to unlock the secrets of prehistoric life. Paleontologist Dean Lomax has worked on fossil sites around the globe, uncovering the bones of the giants that once roamed the land and terrorized the seas. Please welcome Dean Lomax to the studio. Uh, Dean, we just had a question about, you know, what we can discover around us. Mm. And uh, that's exactly what you did, didn't it? Didn't you? And that's how you got into this. Yeah, you're quite right. So I came across this really cool fossil in my hometown museum, in Doncaster Museum and Art Gallery. But there's an interesting story with it, because when I began to examine the specimens in the collection, mm. this fossil was thought to be a plaster cast. It wasn't real. So I teamed up with a colleague of mine from the University of, of, in New York, and uh, she and I examined this specimen. We, we determined that it was a real specimen, and not only that, we determined that it was a new species to science, which together we named after somebody who was a childhood hero of mine, the Victorian fossil hunter, Mary Anning. We named it Ichthyosaurus anningae. And you recreated it into this image so people can see what it would have yeah. looked like. Yeah, this is what it would have looked like. Something similar, to sort of a cross between a, a dolphin and a shark. Yeah, it looks quite aggressive. Yeah, quite aggressive, was. yeah. Probably. probably. <laughs> <laughs> and by studying these fossils, it's not just to get those illustrations, is it? You can actually see how they behaved. Yeah, precisely. And this specimen also has its last meal preserved, which is this dark mass between the ribs. And throughout there are these very, what is very tiny... Spaghetti bolognese? <laughs> well, it's calamari, actually. Yeah. It's calamari. <laughs> you have these very tiny hook shapes in there, densely packed. So we know this, this uh, ichthyosaur was feeding on squid about 190 million years ago. That's amazing. And that's just from studying this one fossil. No great technology there, just looking at what's in there. Precisely. Um, it's not just um, uh, these types of sort of fossils you've been looking at. You've been looking at all sorts of different fossils. Just take us through some of the examples. We've got some illustrations to help you through. Yeah, so I've named a couple of new species as well. So very recently I named this one Ichthyosaurus summersatensis, another one Ichthyosaurus larkini. These are new species which are known from multiple specimens, which were mostly collected during the early and mid-19th century. But I've also named an ichthyosaur, a uh, genus and species of ichthyosaur, yeah. called Wallosaurus macere, after two colleagues of mine, Bill Wall and Judy Macere, oh, who introduced yes. me to, to ichthyosaurs. Some other recent discoveries some of your colleagues have made, mm. which you wanted to bring up today. Yeah, yeah. So one of these recent discoveries is a thing called Teleocrata. This was an early... Uh, relative of crocodiles and dinosaurs. It lived actually before dinosaurs appeared, roughly about 240 million years ago. It would have looked more like a, a little bit like a Komodo dragon, yeah. not necessarily a crocodile or a dinosaur, but it has features of both crocs and dinosaurs. And so it's one of these things, sort of a, a link between the two. And these new species are being uh, discovered all the time, prehistoric meaning much more than just dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, 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 Max, there's a massive misconception that anything prehistoric anything ending with saurus is a dinosaur. It's not, for example, ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, pliosaurs. The names, it sounds yeah, yeah, like yeah. dinosaurs. They, they do, they do. But, you know, they're <laughs> often called swimming dinosaurs, but they're, yeah. not, they're extinct, another group of extinct yeah. reptiles that swam in the seas. And you also have the things which are often called flying dinosaurs. They're, uh, they're flying reptiles, pterosaurs. So they're being discovered all the time, these new species. Uh, give us an example of one that stands out to you. This is a really unusual one. So this thing was called Chilosaurus, and obviously scientists are making new discoveries all the time. Mm. But this was found by a seven-year-old boy. And paleontologists have now examined this. And it's very unusual because it's one of these theropod dinosaurs. Big, well-known theropods include Megalosaurus, T-Rex, Spinosaurus, Velociraptor. This thing was a theropod, but it was herbivorous. OK, so it looks like it would be attacking us but actually it was attacking yeah, plants. It was, it, was, it was a plant eater. And you got that information from? Yeah, well, the stomach contents weren't preserved. It's last meal wasn't preserved. But by looking at the teeth, yeah. we know that these teeth weren't designed for ripping out flesh off of bones. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes, don't they? Let's just give you an illustration of how big some of these creatures were. Just talk us through uh, this image. Yeah, so he's lying down for a reason, right? Yeah, he looks like he's taking a nap, doesn't he? But yeah. he's not. He's actually acting as a scale for this huge dinosaur footprint. It's 1.75 metres long. It's a massive, Amazing. massive footprint. The largest dinosaur footprint on record right now 
Incredible. And we can get a sense of how big the creature was by the illustration. Yeah, um, exactly. The, the animal that made this, uh, this, this footprint was probably about five and a half meters tall, maybe 20 meters in length. One of these big sauropod dinosaurs, the largest animals ever to walk on Earth. Fascinating. But also, you look at these very small creatures as well. We've got this, uh, you know, this creature, this fossil, how big would that be? Hey, this is about one millimeter. Yeah. And the detail is exquisite. It's a really crazy looking thing. How did they find that? How did they find these? <laughs> it, it was found in China, and yeah. it's about 540 million years old, so it's twice as old as the first dinosaurs. Mm. And the really interesting thing about this is that it has this really large mouth. I mean, the detail is great, but it has this really large mouth. And it's thought that potentially it would have let out water. Through uh, the holes at the top? Yeah, yeah, through those slits in the top there. And it's potentially, potentially an evolutionary precursor to gills in fish. Um, we talked about how you know, small that was, how hard it would have been to find. Actually, a lot of these finds are in front of us every day. And mm. talk us through this, this is a piece of amber? Yeah, this is, honestly, Max, this is a spectacular find. And this was found in Myanmar, in Asia. In a market. A, in a market. And what you're looking at here, this is a theropod dinosaur tail that is 99 million years old. Just let that sink in. That's a real dinosaur tail mm. trapped in amber. And it also It looks has, perfectly formed. Perfectly formed. Yeah, perfectly formed. It has feathers preserved. And in those feathers are color pigments. Mm. And we know that by analyzing those pigments that this dinosaur would have been chestnut brown and white. So when you've discovered those before, perhaps in fossils, you wouldn't have known. No, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have had that. It was the fact exactly. it was in amber. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the creature that you came up with. Yeah, you would or, have something like that. So that's a really good artist representation. So, um, you know, what, what you've been helped by, you know, we talked about how you don't need lots of technology, but actually you have been helped by technology oh, yeah, as yeah, well. Definitely. Uh, so if we show this uh, fossil here, uh, in the past, you would have had to just work from that, right? Uh, but actually, with a twist of technology, you can create that. So just talk us through that. So this specimen is a, an example of a dinosaur called Anchionis. It's from China. And it's really unusual now because paleontologists have taken advantage of all these new technologies and these new techniques. And by using a new technique called laser-stimulated fluorescence, yeah. we can basically fire lasers at this thing and it essentially ignites the unusual uh, skin contours from around the feathers and around the arms. And you can see things that you wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye. So, yeah, so it basically allows you to see more in the fossil. Far more detail than actually we've been able to. Uh, and yeah, it's just spectacular. And that helps you with the illustration. So this latest example. So this is a brilliant example. So if you look at this image, you just have a, a foot, but yeah. you use the lasers and it brings it again to life. And you just have there, it's the scaly foot pad of this dinosaur and Keonis. I'm really interested in this next image because it looks so unimpressive, yeah. but it tells us so much. And this is about studying the behavior of dinosaurs. And that's it, yeah. Yeah, and, and behavior in the fossil record is incredibly rare to obviously understand because usually you're just looking at you know a rock and it's like okay how did this thing act mm. you can look at the teeth footprints whatever here this doesn't look particularly impressive this is a specimen from colorado usa very recently described thing these are actually scratch marks and they're thought to be made by a theropod dinosaur and they're quite close to nests and what the thinking is is that potentially what these dinosaurs were doing is some sort of courtship behaviors yeah. as living birds today that's a basically dance around to impress yeah. a mate. And we think that this is what was happening about 150 so years ago. So that, that was a scratch in the ground when they were dancing effectively Dancing like around, this. yeah, to, to attract a mate. And it's fascinating, isn't it, Nina? Because, you know, they're so easy to damage, these little relics as well. And that's right. Well, it's just fascinating to hear how you can learn so much from something so, mm. so small. Our next person who wants to ask a question, Nishant, wants to fast forward things many millions of years okay. into the future, or at least until uh, today. Nishant, you've got a question, don't you, about dinosaurs if they're around today? Yes, I do. If you manage to recreate dinosaurs, will they be able to survive in present day conditions? Let's see, the good questions come through. I guarantee, hopefully everybody's listening here, that if you walk outside today, you will see a living dinosaur, because dinosaurs aren't extinct. Birds are dinosaurs. There's over 10, 11,000 different living species of, of bird alive today. And so they are actually a group of dinosaurs. They evolved from dinosaurs which are very similar to Velociraptor and Deinonychus roughly about 150, 160 million years ago. And birds are dinosaurs that evolved from, from descendants. Let's get another question from the audience. You've got a question, don't you? It's Daniel, isn't it? Um, what was the first dinosaur that was discovered? Mm. Was the first dinosaur ever discovered, was that? That was it. Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so the very, first <laughs> no, no, no. The, the very first dinosaur to, to be discovered was a thing called Megalosaurus. It was found, it was described in 1824. It was found in the late 1700s in a quarry in Ardley in Oxfordshire. 
and it was announced by a British scientist, a guy called William Buckland. He then went on to describe various other dinosaurs and other animals. There's a couple more dinosaurs described. There's Iguanodon and Hyliosaurus, and eventually there's a Sir Richard Owen, a scientist also from the UK, who is the founder of the Natural History Museum in London. He came up with the word dinosaur. So it's all happened here? It all happened In the UK? Right here. In the right place a British invention. <laughs> <laughs> we'll claim it anyway. Yeah, we'll claim that. I'm sure someone in another country will probably be claiming it as well. Uh, still ahead, uh, Diva, Chris and Dean will all be back with me on, on stage together. Coming up after the break, we'll get more questions from our audience for our inspiring guests. That's it uh, next on CNN's Wild Discoveries.